a nice day for a Porsche drive. What's up everybody, welcome back to the channel. Today we have 2017 Porsche Boxster S. A little bit of a rainy day out here today. Turn off your parking sensors up here if you want. We are in lovely Newport Beach, California this week. Yeah, maybe we'll try the top up just to experience what that sounds like. It is nice, you can put the top up and down fully uh, as long as you're going under 30 miles per hour, so. Okay, so let's talk about this car. We're in a 2017 Porsche Boxster S. This is the controversial one where they uh, replaced that legendary, emotional, naturally aspirated flat six sonorous beautiful motor with this 2.5 liter four-cylinder turbocharged what the heck's Porsche thinking well in some ways it makes a lot of sense on paper right because there's more horsepower there's more torque there's more efficiency it's faster lighter more, more fuel efficient what more do you want the sound right the sound of the motor is different it's not necessarily that it's bad some people think it's bad but it's just different so we'll go out here we'll go for a little drive see what this sounds like now this is a mid-engine platform so the motor is sitting directly behind us here right here engine bay of the motor surprisingly practical sports car here it is only a two-seater but there's a large front space up there and then there's actually a little bit of storage in the back behind the engine as well. So let's talk about the different Boxster trim levels. So there's the base model, the S model, the GTS model. This is the mid the mid tier, the S model. Uh, the base model is about 300 horsepower. This one's 350 horsepower so quite a bit more power. Uh, and it's almost a full second faster, zero to 60. Now, there are some other options you can you need to get that kind of speed, so you can have the Sport Chrono package, which you'll see those that have that have the clock up there on the dash, and that gives you launch control. Let's let you listen to this a little bit. And uh, in addition to the launch control, you also, or the Sport Chrono package, there's a PASM package. This one doesn't have where you can uh, adjust the suspension. Surprisingly comfortable ride for how sporty it is. I was expecting it to be a little bit more jarring of a ride just around town, but it's actually surprisingly comfortable. We do have a Sport button here. When you turn on sport mode, it's going to hold the revs higher, it's going to adjust the exhaust note a little bit. Uh, it does not have the 6-speed manual, but it has the PDK, so it's a dual clutch transmission. If you push it over to the left here, now you have these beautiful paddle shifters, and the shifts are so fast. <laughs> Look at the, watch the tack. So fast. Everything in here is premium. Everything feels premium, all the touch points, the way it sounds in here. It's Porsche. The steering wheel is beautiful. I love the simplicity of it, the three spoke design, this leather. And there is a little Easter egg up here. If you look closely, right along this area, it says 718 in the stitching. This is the 718 Boxster. So that was a little bit about heritage. You know, Porsche is a legendary German automobile manufacturer. They 
the 911's been around for forever and it is the pinnacle. The problem with the 911 is the motor is in the rear. It's a rear engine car so that you have to do some pretty interesting engineering gymnastics to get that thing safe and planted on the ground. Whereas this car is a mid-engine car where the engine's supposed to be. And that allows this car to have a perfect 50-50 weight distribution and it allows the car to rotate when it turns on the center of the car, whereas the 911 has that weight in the back that acts like a, a catapult and a slingshot that early 911 some were called the Widowmaker because they were high performance cars that you really needed to know how to drive safely. So it's, it's interesting within the Porsche community where the 911 is the pinnacle, that's the aspirational model, and some people feel like the Cayman and the Boxster aren't aren't really at the same level as the 911. And Porsche for many, many years did not fully build this car, the Cayman and the Boxster. The, the, the Cayman is the coupe version of the Boxster, basically the same platform. So for many, many years, Porsche did not fully dial out this platform for fear of overrunning the 911. But finally, they gave us the GT4, which in the most recent iteration of the GT4, it's like, it has the engine of the 911 GT3 in the chassis of, of the Cayman GT4. And that car, I haven't driven one yet, but it's supposed to be absolutely incredible. Now here's how this sounds on the freeway. So we got the roof up. How does it sound for you guys? not bad and this, this car has cruise control not adaptive but just normal cruise control and it's actually pretty comfortable to cruise down the freeway in this car it has uh, these adjustable seats that are really comfortable they hug you hold you in they're perforated and absolutely beautiful you can see this inside of the um, soft top is actually a nice touch there's a barrier you know feels really premium and nice up there. Look at the gauge cluster. This has red gauges, which which are so cool. I'm going to get off over here if I can. And, uh, yeah, life in a Boxster is good. to sport mode and then flip this thing over we can play a little bit with some burbles and pops coming out of this exhaust system red line is 7000 the car just moves just begging to be pushed there's a nice Audi e-tron GT ahead of us look how big and wide that sucker is Such a flat car. It just hugs the road. And then when you just want to cruise, you put this thing over, turn off sport, turn on cruise control. Let's see it set it right there. And you can go push it forward to go faster, pull it back to go slower, see the speed changing. This is what it's like to cruise on the freeway in a Boxster S. I would like to try the manual. I hear that it's fantastic. But if you're going to have an automatic, this would be the one. This PDK is absolutely fantastic. So in terms of the center stack here, 
we'll start from the top here. We have these 9-11 inspired vents, which are really cool. There's four, you can see, with these louvers on the top. And then down here, there's a small Apple CarPlay uh, screen. There's actually a CD player here. A little Porsche logo right here. I love the way all these, ga these, these gauges sound. Everything just sounds awesome. It's really easy to see out of this car, I mean, especially with the roof down. But, uh, I really value a driving experience where I feel comfortable seeing it, seeing all the corners, especially that beautiful swooping front hood. Oh man, the prominence of the ridge lines on the front of the hood from this perspective, really beautiful. So one of the things I was noticing yesterday is in terms of practicality, right? We talked about the storage space up front. I thought there, there wasn't any place to put my phone, no place, but there, I found this little hidden cubby right here. And this is actually really cool. There's like a little hidden storage down there where you could put your phone, my glasses are up there. And then if you need a drink, you need a bevy, we got the cup holders over here. Welcome to Oceanside, my friends. We came down here to, in search of sunlight because it was stormy up north from Huntington down into Newport all the way down to San Clemente. But we, we came down here to uh, Oceanside and actually we got some sunshine. So it's kind of a nice way to do it if you need to go searching for sun, you get yourself a sports car and you want to drive it anyway, so it's a win-win. <laughs> 